Hello, welcome to Always Games TV podcast. My name is Roger Knowles and I will be your host today. We're in the third episode of the Always Games TV podcast. Um, we are scorching hot in the UK weather this present moment, but we've managed to get ourselves together, hopefully wearing all our clothes. Um, and I'm joined by, once again, Tom Simpson. Hello. <laughs> How are you feeling, buddy? Are you coping in the sun? Yeah, a little bit red, but... <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you're glowing, my friend. You're glowing, and oh, also joined by Daniel Twist. What's up? How you doing, bud? You're right. I'm not too bad. I've bit myself uh, being in the sun, so I've got myself a nice little tan going. So it's all good, even <laughs> with this heat, which is supposed to continue till end of month. Apparently so. I got to admit, it's, uh, I was chatting to someone the other day, and apparently they have. Well, they're quite old, and they were saying that the uh, last time they experienced this sort of weather, lasting for this amount of time, was 1970 something or something. On their opinion, anyway, uh, I don't know that what the one. actual uh, official um, uh, charts say, but yeah, I got to admit, it's certainly been a real scorcher. Um, so anyway, how are we doing, guys? Have you been up too much lately? Not particularly. <laughs> Well, same <laughs> for me. Same, really. Just been a bit busy re- recently, so we've all been working really hard and plenty of money. Ah, uh, indeed. <laughs> um, well, over on my front, I've got to admit, I've had a bit of. I did tweet a picture up on the Always Games TV Twitter that uh, I've actually upgraded my PC with a brand new graphics card. The well. I'm going to start like giving out a little bit of the names and stuff, but if it weren't for you, Tom, I wouldn't actually have a freaking clue what I was on about. So it's going to be the GeForce GTX 660 Twin Frozer. I think that's how you say it. Um, which I've now got installed in my PC, but again, lots of the thanks goes to you, Tom, for uh, sorting that out and installing it for me. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, got to admit, opened up the side of my PC, it was pretty much... I did the, the blank look, I just gave it... I, I've learned a little bit now, thanks to you, but um, yeah, I really didn't know anything that I was doing. But uh, did you uh, purchase yourself uh, one as well, Tom? Yeah, just to uh, replace my old one and future-proof it a little bit. Which, well, which graphics card did you get? Uh, the 7 GTX 770. And uh, is your bank account presently screaming at you? It's empty. <laughs> <laughs> what with the Steam sale and all. Oh yeah, I've got to admit, it's, um, that started on... What day did that begin now? It was about 60. Seven, 70, well, about 17 for now, so it's been going about a week now, I think, for the Steam sale. Go on then, guys, give us a rundown of what you bought so far on Steam. Go on, Dan, you go first. Right, so far as I can remember, I have currently bought Star Wars Battlefront 2, which I first played, was it, on the original Xbox, so I've decided to purchase that and give it another bash. Uh, what else have I purchased? I, I, the Borderlands 2 Season Pass, which dropped down in price. So I can now continue playing Borderlands 2, finally. So I need to do a lot of catching up on that. And at the moment, just looking for games to drop in price at the moment. So that's all I, at the moment. How about you, Tom? Have you uh, been picking up any uh, Steam sale goodies? Yeah, on the Flash sales I picked up um, Hitman Absolution. So that looked quite good. All the old Hitman games were pretty fun. And the new Tomb Raider. Yeah, they both did drop dramatically in price, actually. I spotted that. I actually got Tomb Raider when it dropped to about £20, I think it was about two or three months ago. But um, I've been keeping my eye on the Hitman Absolution. That really did drop by a dramatic amount in this uh, summer sale. Wasn't it like... A fiver. Four, fiver. <laughs> yeah. That's only, that came out at the beginning of the year, didn't it? Uh, you, I think so. I'm not really sure. So I'm glad I it anyway. I think I say same with that with the new Tomb Raider. That was on the released early uh, back end of this year, early this year. Mm. And that's and what and what did you purchase that for, Tom? The new Tomb Raider, like six or seven quid, I think. Yeah, Ridiculous. from what well, from down from about twenty five pound when it first released on Steam when it, was it like released eight, back end of year. It's about eighty eight percent off, I think. Really yeah, good. A lot of money it's, to be reduced. It's, by. it's not bad actually because I say I buy it from uh, release and I enjoyed it uh, quite a lot. With, especially with game mechanics and everything, it was just brilliant gameplay. Yeah, I bought it I'm not too a fond while of. back. I did buy it a while back, and um, I found the situation was, I because again with my graphics cards, then I just wanted to test what the frame rate was and things like that, and I haven't really been able to go back and actually have a really good bash at it. Um, it does seem very uncharted esque. Mm, you, you could probably put it that way. Yes, there is a few like say problems with it, but overall, it's not bad for how it's played out. Um, so, but. Uh, it's like, how does it feel for, like, playing? Does it feel like a true Tomb Raider game? Uh, not 
Well, you've got the parts where it is a Tomb Raider game, but then you've got the parts where it's like kind of modernized it, so it doesn't feel exactly like an original Tomb Raider. Because obviously they've upgraded it uh, numerous times from the originals to now, so. Yes, they, have, the they do seem to have done path. a uh, form of evolution through the stages of each game, but they did sort of have a yeah. similar format, um, and this seems to be certainly a major Tomb Raider title uh, of, of the ones yeah. that were released, which seems to have been dramatically changed, especially in the yeah. style. The only the big difference between the obviously the new Tomb Raider and the old ones, the new one is the origin story of Lara Croft where she was beginning her adventures as an uh, archaeologist and a uh, relic collector and that. And then also this is more of a survival version, not a uh, actual seeking treasures with bad guys following you every step behind you. Can I just ask? More survival. Is it anything like Far Cry 3? Mm, no. I wouldn't compare it to Far Cry 3. I mean that kind of I... open world survival type. Oh, oh. The, the, open, mm, the open world, yes and no. You follow the story, you follow kind of a linear road, but there right. is kind of like multiple ways to get to where you have to be. But would, but you can go explore. So there is that open world, but obviously it's kind of linear at the same time. Yeah, it's certainly one game I'm going to have to really get back to and have a little play through. Um, and again, it's, it's, I think it's... It's one of it seems very story driven, which I'm looking forward to because uh, I do really like my single player um, story driven games. Uh, it's going back to all like Metal Gear Solid and things like that, I really do enjoy those. Um, very character building. Um, but also, yeah, moving on to with the Steam, it, it, it seems that with the Steam Summer Sale, it, it's a bittersweet situation because if you paid for the game originally for full price, you feel gutted. Is probably the best way to put it that uh, you paid full price and now it's just. Meh. Well, like I say, for me, I bought to like I said, I bought Tomb Raider when it was first released, so I paid like twenty five pound for it, and now obviously it's like what about five months later or so, it's dropped down to like seven pounds. So yeah, I'm a bit gutted, like, but I couldn't wait to kind of play it. Yeah. So it's like one of those things, isn't it? Do you can you wait for like a sale if you know it's coming, or do you want to just buy the game and play it? True, true. I guess it's that sort of consideration that you could, um, yeah. you pay the, the, the larger amount of it and you get a chance to be able to play it straight away. Um, it's always that. It's any case with any sort of sale, with any sort of um, product, really, I guess. Well, I've sort of uh, been going through this, uh, the Steam sale quite badly. <laughs> I keep seeing the deal up and keep buying it. Um, I, I think I started off, get, I got Defiance for £6.50 or something like that. Uh- Oh, you bought Defiance? Uh, yeah, I got Defiance. I, uh, one of my other friends isn't overly happy with me because he bought it on the PlayStation 3 uh, a while back and be trying to get me yeah. to play it. But for £6.50, you can't really go wrong, in all honesty. Yeah. Um, then I got... Again, uh, just, got uh, just before, carry on, again, with uh, Defiance. I got Defiance through Raptor, so I got like a 30% discount on uh, Raptor through Try on Worlds themselves. Hmm. So I bought the Deluxe, instead of for like £40, I got the Deluxe for like £27. So yet again, that wasn't actually that long ago. That was probably about, what, two months ago? Then all of a sudden, Steam sale comes, Defiance, £6.79. It's like, you're joking, right? <laughs> well, I guess it is because the situation of being a sale, isn't it? You've got to make yeah. that choice whether or not you're going to wait or grab onto it as soon as possible. Yeah, no, no, Defiance hasn't really, Defiance hasn't been really around for that long. Uh, I keep getting told to watch the TV series, which is running alongside this, made by the... Uh, that... I was supposed, I was going to watch the TV series alongside it, but I missed the starting of it, so I was like, yeah, same here. damn, so I'm going to uh, try and catch up with it at some point when I've got the time. I was kind of hoping it would come on Netflix or Love Film, I have to admit, um, so I can grab hold of it and have a little watch of it, but uh, I, all, all, what I've heard, it's good, it's actually very good. Um, I just haven't really got, it's one of those sort of things I just haven't got really around to really watching. It's, I don't seem to watch a lot of, uh, I guess probably the best way to put it, live television, it's not really live, but you know what I mean. When it's on yeah. this TV, when it's, it's, when it's released at the rele- yeah. first release, exactly. Yeah. I've seen to catch a lot of things up on uh, Netflix and things like that. But yeah, so I also got uh, the Gary's mod, uh, including the Counter Strike sauce. I got that. I think it was a couple of quid altogether. Uh, I got Left for Dead uh, Two. Uh, maybe mean to pick up that for a little while now. I had it on the Xbox 360, but I never it on the PC. But I think there's a lot more opportunities to mod that as well, especially being on uh, the PC options. There's a lot more maps which I'm enjoying. So I'm looking forward to playing. 
Helm's um, Deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Helm's Deep map I'm looking forward to. I'm looking for more to the Resident Evil maps. Yeah, I'm a big Resident Evil fan, so it'll be interesting to play some of those on there as well. Uh, I've actually today just picked up the Lord of the Rings Lego game, which I don't really know why, but it was four ninety nine, so I was like, ah, oh, screw it. Um, well, because their Lego games tend to be fun sometimes. Yeah, uh, I just kind of got a bit burnt out with the Star Wars ones. Um, but the audio for this is actually taken directly from the movies, so I'm, I'm looking forward to having a play on this. I think it's one of those sort of it? games where it'll be a bit of a whim when I play it. I didn't realise they took the other front movie. Yeah, it's directly That'd taken That'd be quite from... interesting. So there's actually full voiceover for the game, and again, yeah, it's taken straight from the movies, so it'd be quite a good one. Um, I, might have to pick, I might have to pick that up if that's still in sale. Yeah, it should be on for the next uh, six hours, I think, at 4 um, cool. The other two oh. I also picked up yep. today was, I think it was today, Mass Effect 1 and 2, mainly because, again, I played them all, but I didn't have them on the PC, so uh, what else did I pick up? I think that's about it, actually. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. There's probably a couple of others which I've missed, but I just keep getting tempted too easily. I've got no willpower on the thread. So, Tom, did you say you picked up anything, actually? Um, Hitman, Tomb Raider. Oh, that's it, sorry. Uh, I think there's something else really cheap. I can't remember what. Oh, you told me to buy um, it was Series Sam 3 as well, which I ended up getting. Oh, yeah, I already did that. <laughs> it was pretty mental. Like, is, that is, that up, is Series Sam 3 up on uh, sale or not? It uh, was I'll have a quick check, actually. I'm actually on the Steam sales right now. And I can't see it at its present moment. Not on the main screen. That's a shame. Uh, but it probably will be back up. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, that covers the Steam sale. I think that's running through for the next few days. Um, yeah, it's running up till for another five days to 22nd of July. Yeah. So that'll be, I'm sure I'll be spending a hell of a lot more money until that finishes. And um, a lot more deals to come. Uh, yeah. Just, there's a few games I've got my eyes on, so hopefully they'll be able to knock those down in price. But, um, so have we been into anything else, guys? Not particularly, no. Just being a bit busy, so I haven't really been able to play much games except for that, uh, the video which you posted of Cube World. Other than that, not much else, really. No worries, well, we'll crack on with the news. So the first big news, actually, it was, well, it's been a little bit quiet on the news front, in all truth, uh, lately in the last couple of weeks it's not any major announcements except for one which really did stand out for me which was the release of the first official gameplay footage of Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, by Rockstar it was uh, released about I think four or five days ago now but um, it's showing off some gameplay footage of the city of Los Santos and introducing some of the th- uh, characters which will be playable within the Grand Theft Auto game um, it looks like the Rockstar are switching from the single one character playing uh, gameplay to a switch between three characters um, which is going to introduce a form of maybe setting up your own heights and almost a form of strategy and building towards missions and doing them in different ways which could bring up the uh, idea of options. Uh, did you guys manage to sit down and actually have a look at this? Um, Tom, did you did you have a look at this? I had a quick view at the uh, GTA trailer. It looks... It does look rather fun. Um... Unfortunately, uh, the current gen, it doesn't look too, you know, there's not too much eye candy because it can't support the textures. Yes, it seems to have focused a lot on the open worldness factor of it rather than the actual photorealism section of it. You can definitely tell it's at the current gen, not the next gen. But is it, oh, I have to double check this myself, um, is it coming out on the PlayStation 4? Does anybody know? Oh, it will be, uh, yeah. Because have they actually released any news of what it's released on platforms-wise? It will definitely be on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. The actual trailer which was released was all captured from a PlayStation 3. Mm. I can pretty much guarantee it'll come out on uh, the next-gen console. Yeah, because they thought what they've been doing, aren't they, both Microsoft and Sony, to be any new games are kind of like doing two versions of them, aren't they, really? Like one for the next-gen and one for current-gen. So yeah, obviously the, new, the current, yeah, so the current gens don't have to buy the new gens to play games. Yeah, I got to admit, it certainly, I got to admit, I was watching it and it got me very excited about the new, I love the Grand Theft Auto. I have to admit, San Andreas is my favourite. Uh, I wasn't overly impressed with number four, I never completed it, I always seem to get three quarters of the way in, stop, and then I'd pick it up a year later, get three quarters of the way in, I seem to stop exactly the same point again, and just never really picked it up again, but it's, it's, it looks more like it's heading back to the San Andreas feel with the idea of customization for your character, tattoos, 
possible hairdos, clothing. Uh, I know that had, they had clothing number four, but it didn't seem as versatile as number th- uh, in. Uh, they had clothing in GTA 4, but not as versatile as San Andreas. Um, and it seems to go along more of that lines again. Um, I certainly like the idea of the three characters and their intermingling uh, and building towards missions. But are we really excited for a new Grand Theft Auto? Or how do you guys feel on this? Well, Dan, what do you think? Uh, well, for me, like I say, I'm saying with you, with uh, GTA 4, I didn't particularly like that because I played it. It was like, yeah, it's your typical San Andreas. It's kind of like San Andreas, like, but with GTA 4, kind of, it, was it the same city as number three? That's correct, yeah, Liberty City. Yeah, yeah. It was like, hang on, what's, what's going on here? It's like, you're playing in the same city. It's like, what's going on? Yeah. It's like, kind of like the same story, but that's like, like, but different, with like different characters or something. Well, in truth, um, number five is actually going back to San Andreas. It's only a section of it, though. Uh, if you remember, yeah. the first island of San Andreas was Los Santos, um, and they've expanded that by a considerable amount, by well, huge amount. Um, yeah. And that's going to be that's going to be the location for this one. And it also um, it's introducing five more characters. Uh, sorry, five more characters, three more characters <laughs> to the gameplay. Five? Well, no, they're not going that far yet. Um, do you, but yeah, I, are you interested by the idea that. that they're going to be building up towards maybe that you have to be strategic in your missions? Uh, well, the, the idea comes across quite decent enough because like I say you, you, the idea of switching between three characters at will. So you're playing like one character to like operate one thing, then you just obviously switch to another just to pull off somewhere else. Then obviously you can switch back and forth. So, like, it's just, like if you uh, watch trailer, the part where they're taking a the hostage from the building, switch one going down building, switch to sniper, switch back to hostage carrier, and jump out, away you go. It is an interesting setup that they seem to have done, uh, mainly also, like, uh, the, I think it's in the trailer, like a, a form of voyeur, uh, voyeurism, um, that you can, once you leave your character, they're not just going to be stood there where you left them, it'll... They're going to live their own lives and do whatever they wish to do, and you can drop in at any point to see what they're up to, which I find quite interesting. It adds that's, a whole lot more depth to gameplay as well. Because that area, that's obviously only during, uh, during outside of missions, obviously. So if you're during missions, it'd be kind of pointless, like. So, but that idea of like, yeah, as you said, your characters live their own life, which is quite interesting. Because obviously, you could just play one character all the time and then just go back and see what they're doing. Mm. So you do uh, use all three characters in the missions, though? Yeah, in, in the missions, obviously, but then when you come into roaming, you don't have to go between the three characters while roaming. You can just use one character and just build that character, then go back and see what the other two are doing. Yeah, so what uh, I'm really looking forward to is the multiplayer. It's the added jets now. Yes, it was like a teaser, wasn't it, right at the end of the trailer, that they showed off that jet flying past the apartment window, which is a little bit of a, ooh, we've got planes back again. Um... But it, it, i got to admit, they, they are, as they say in the trailer, they will be announcing more information on GTA Online, which, to be honest, was one of the best factors of number four, in my opinion. It was more enjoyable, plus the, it was more up to you for what you could get up to, and the amount of stupidity that happened online that I got up to with my friends was brilliant. Yeah. Uh, basically, I'll give you a quick rundown, actually. I've got some information here on the actual three characters. The um, main, well, I called the originally the first character we ever saw from one of, I think it was the announcement trailer I think over a year ago now, was uh, Michael, the former like um, old guy uh, sort of look. He sort of reminds me of a old Tommy Vassetti from Vice City. It looks like right. a bit of a look of him. Um, he's apparently a retired criminal. Um, mm-hmm. But also I'm looking here that they've actually, each character's got special skills. Um, one of the special kill- skills that Michael has is uh, bullet time with the guns, which could be quite interesting. Hmm. Uh, does it actually state what the skill, what it kind of insists what bullet time is, or does it just state what skills and not it just, are? I've just got some information up on here, and it says uh, bullet time. So I presume slow motion, uh, yeah. uh, all the matrixy sort of feel to it, which could be yeah. quite interesting. Mm, could could uh, add a new style to it. Yeah, the, the next character is uh, Trevor Phillips. It seems a bit of the nutcase redneck guy. Um, apparently an ex-military pilot. Um, yeah, uh, he looks interesting. Was he the one that was trying to stuff that foot down the toilet? That's the one. <laughs> right. That was, like, that, 
That was just like, what the hell? This ca- this guy's a crazy killer or something. <laughs> he just looks utterly nuts. He's going to be the person who just want to do something stupid. Go with him. Um, also, Pretty his much. special skill is the frenzy mode, which is a double damage given, half taken. Apparently, special melee attack. The third guy is Franklin. Um, apparently, a former red car guy. Apparently, it says here whatever that is. Um, it it looks like with this character, you're going to be maybe going back to the sort of style of uh, San Andreas with the Grove Street Gang and him handling that situation, which I used to love with back then from San Andreas was the some of the one-liners were brilliant. I loved them. They were so quick, brilliantly done. And his skill is the slow motion driving, apparently. Huh. That'd be interesting. It'd be good for stunt jumps. Mm-hmm. And maybe even like, amongst um, if you get if you get chased by police and amongst thick lo- and lots of traffic and stuff like that. You might be able to weave in and out, in and out with them, with uh, make yourself look really cool. I'm um, quite looking forward to uh, seeing what the soundtrack is for the game. Because if you remember San Andreas, yeah, I'd all I, it, you I know, forgot about that. San Andreas radio soundtrack sounds pretty good. Mm. Some country radio stations, hip hop, and I think there was like a, a Latina kind of station. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I can't, I can't really remember. It's been ages since I played, but some good music. I used to love the Vice City one, actually. That was my favourite radio shows, like the VCPR. Uh, yeah. They were brilliant, I got to admit. But yeah, basically, uh, also uh, moving on with the news for Rockstar, that apparently Rockstar Leeds recently posted a job listing for a programmer, but has since been removed. Um, basically, it was uh, Rockstar Leeds who are currently looking for a talented graphics programmer to help bring their latest titles to the PC platform. Now... With obviously the announcement, oh, but sorry, the showing of the uh, Grand Theft Auto V gameplay, do you think this is going to be maybe them trying to look into someone to bring it to the PC? I certainly hope so. I think there are certainly some possibilities of, uh, especially with the mods that you can be created for the PC versions, it's going to be quite interesting. Uh, hopefully they will bring it across to the PC. Especially with, uh, they never brought Red Dead Redemption either uh, across to the PC, which uh, I'd like to see that happen as well. Yeah, that was a shame. A real shame. I got to admit, it, it, would you I'll give you I'll give you a question here? Would you like to have seen Grand Theft Auto Five or Red Dead Redemption Two? A GTA Five. How about you? Uh, Dan? For me, uh, GTA Five. I never played Red Dead Redemption. Even all I know about that is basically a Western style version of GTA. Other than that, I know nothing of Red Dead Redemption. Uh, it's it, it's worth playing. Get yourself on it. If you ever do release a PC version of it, I'd say get yourself. To just have a bash at it. It's really good fun. I got to admit, it, like I say, it is a G, it is a Western sort of cowboy version of GTA, but the depth of it and the characters were brilliant. I got to did, admit. Did you ever play a game called Gun on the original Xbox? No, no, but I heard about it. I never actually played it. I, if I'm right, I think it might have been very, you know, similar to that, but obviously it's not as old. Mm. Yeah. But well, I say we well, mentioned with uh, G, with GTA Five possibly coming to PC. Like I said, uh, we said uh, they took down the job listing for graphics programmer. For, but obviously, if it's due PC release, I don't think it won't be for a while yet. Probably. Mm. Yeah. So we'll probably probably will see one, but not on release. But um, anyway, so Grand Theft Auto Five is uh, to be released in September if it doesn't get this year again. Apparently, so yeah, that's what it's going to be released. That'd be, that'd be that'd be good then. Yeah, hopefully they don't push it back, <laughs> but I doubt Hopefully. they will now. Uh, but they keep, companies always keep pushing games back. At least the uh, remember uh, their publisher is not EA, is it? No, no, no. That's no, at least they have. Like I said, we mentioned that. Then at least they have EA tell them, "Oh, you gotta, you gotta release it now." It's like, no, we're not ready. Well, actually, speaking of uh, EA, um, Battlefield Four is apparently going to be including an all new novel uh, on release. So. You like to do your reading, Tom. Uh, you read a hell of a lot more books than I do. Um, are you interested in this? Um, it might be one to pick up. But then again, it might just be terrible. <laughs> yeah, Some it's, game novels aren't brilliant. It's, it's been written by uh, PT, Peter Grimsdale, who also co-wrote the uh, Battlefield 3 The Russian with Andy McNabb. Um, again, I, I'm, I don't really read many of uh, their books, but does any of those names spring out at you at all? Andy McNabb was, I think, he was like in, uh, in the SAS. All um, right. He's written a load of like best-selling books. Um, oh, right. Uh, oh, right. I didn't realise that. Actually, that could be quite. Uh, I might have to even get up that, uh, pick up that Battlefield Three: The Russian then, because 
So it does, uh, I keep finding trying to find games which are uh, or, uh, books which are related to games which are very, very good. The only one that I used to, I did read of quite a few years ago was Resident Evil uh, Umbrella Corporation by S. D. Perry, which was quite a few years ago now. But basically, it was just written the written version of Resident Evil story. Um, but I found that quite intriguing. Another format to be able to enjoy the story. Uh, how about you, Dan? Have you read any uh, game related books? Uh, other game related books that I've read are the Mass Effect books. Mass Effect. So How many read... uh, books did they release actually, Mass Effect? There's, there is four books released. I've read the first two. So you've got the first one, I can't remember the name of it now. Can't remember the name of the book now, but basically the first one is basically the story of Captain Anderson and Saren. Mm-hmm. And then you've got then obviously it goes on to Mass Effect 1 because then you find out about Captain Anson if you talk to him what happens then the book yeah. goes into more detail of what actually happened with his mission with Saren then you've got the second book which kind of goes into a a, ch- a child who's autistic with biotic powers and she's can't control her abilities and goes on the run or something and someone ends up like trying to track her down and that and then we, that also mentions Cerberus, then the third one's a continuation with Cerberus and that trying to track down then. The fourth one after the last book I've heard is actually terrible because it's not written by the same person who wrote the previous three. Mm. So there's apparently a hell of a lot of loopholes in that book. So I haven't actually bought that to read it, but I might do if it drops down in price just to see how bad or if just bad dip your toe in and see actually how bad it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking reviews, it's just of terrible. Uh, Mass Effect, actually, uh, Bioware commented that apparently um, the production of the new Mass Effect is in full yeah. flow. Um, uh, basically, there was a tweet put out by the uh, cinematic director, Ken Thane, saying, The new Mass Effect story and main character reviews today, this beep is getting real. I think the fans will really uh, be really excited to play this story. Um, the uh, Mass Effect producer Mike Gable also went on to say lots of great Mass Effect meetings today things are really moving forward and it's great to be evol- involved in the universe again um, with the new Mass Effect coming out it will not be uh, will not be featuring Commander Shepard seeing that sure. his story uh, was fully wrapped up in Mass Effect 3 also the new game will also be running on the Frostbite 3 engine which means it's going to be nice and pretty um are you guys really wanting a new Mass Effect? What do you think, Tom? Um, as long as it's fresh, you know, like some games like Call of Duty and uh, certain other games, you know, they get stagnant and get a bit boring after a while. Um, they also quoted saying that the, the new game will be friendly to both old and new fans. Oh, sorry, newcomers. Um, uh, it may be sounding like they may be changing a few things up a little bit and maybe possibly heading in a, a new direction, maybe like what they did with Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 2 where they removed a lot of the RPG elements. Um, to, um, Dan, what did you think to it? Well, the trilogy of Mass Effect was brilliant except for the fact that EA pushed Bioware to release number 3 early, which to me was a bad idea. So I just hope this time round with this new Mass Effect, which I'm actually intrigued with it being a new story because it's set like, I think it's set about 50 years in the future after Shepard's ending with Mass Effect 3. So obviously, as long as EA don't push Bioware again to release an unfinished game, then I can't wait for it to be released. As long, and then also adding new RPG elements to it because what, what the change, like I say, from 1 to 2 was a kind of a good idea but I wasn't fond of it at first then I got used to it and I was like oh it works out pretty good so to do something like that it'd be alright just as long as I don't publish an unfinished game yeah it seems to be um, since EA have taken the reins of Bioware it seems to be a, a, a big case that they seem to be um, doing that a lot really it's it basically um, the doctors have left basically Bioware um, and it was Dr. Ray Musica and Greg Zeschuk I think is the name yeah. I think are they the right uh, um, so, yeah, yeah. Like that. Uh, but they were the, the founders of Bioware um, mm. and they obviously saw Mass Effect all the way to the end 
saw the release of Swotor, um, obviously, um, oh, what, uh, Dragon Age, you know, big releases like that, but now they have left, um, which my feeling that maybe EA have finally got the reins of Bioware fully. Do you think that this is a good thing that they're releasing a new Mass Effect and that it, do you think that the, um, the t- tendrils of EA could affect it? Well, let's say, with the release of a new Mass Effect game, yes, I, like I said, I'm intrigued for a new Mass Effect because it, it's a brilliant game, like, because they've done a really good story. Just as long as EA don't push Bioware again to publish an unfinished game, like I said, we did with Mass Effect 3, and they also did it with uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, that was unfinished as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as long as they don't, like they as long as they the don't rush them. Yeah. Just don't rush them to get a game out just because everyone else is getting a game out. Oh, they, these companies are getting games out. Get it out, get it out. It's like, no, we don't want to. You're getting it out now. Yeah, so, they more so what, seem to want the money rather than actually uh, pleasing the audience. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of Bioware, actually, the um, original, well, core team that created Knights of the Old Republic are actually apparently creating a new IP at Bioware. So it looks like they're going to be moving on to a new uh, style of game. And if it's anything like the quality of the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic I personally are going to be very happy about this obviously there's no actual official announcement what this new IP is and what it's going to be a style of but um, does this interest you guys? Oh, cause I never actually played any, any of the Star Wars the Old Republics mm. though I, I, I have seen videos of them but it, I don't think it was anything it wasn't really intriguing me that much and mm. I, was, I bought the old republic the new version but it's just still somewhat wrong with it yeah i guess it's personal opinion on it as well because like for example it came out 10 years ago and it, it i guess it's a fair age of a game now and in fact i think it just celebrated its uh, 10th birthday uh this I... earlier this week actually yeah so it obviously i guess it's when you came into it uh i'm a big star wars fan anyway and i i i quite often will play old star wars games and look past the graphics a little bit. I think you sometimes you have to because to be able to find a good Star Wars game, you have to look past the graphics because yeah. of some of the fairly recent Star Wars ones. I personally like the Old Republic, but I think some of the other ones are a little bit lacking in certain areas. Yeah, definitely. But I say with uh, Old Republic, I say again that was unfinished. But then obviously they released the end game content which it needed. Yeah, again it, it, they certainly improved upon it by a dramatic amount. It was, it, yeah, I got to admit, I was certainly impressed with it, I got to admit. But, you know, I guess it's, it'll just be interesting to see what new IP that they get, um, and what they're working on. Yeah. I said, then we'll mention of Bio as well. Uh, have you seen the new Dragon Age, uh, they're working on? In all honesty, I played the first Dragon Age, loved it, and it's been, it burnt me. Yeah. What about um, number two? Uh, Did you I play much of Dragon Age? I'd say the second one it burned me. I couldn't. The first one I loved. The second one I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Was it? Um, was it the new style of combat? Or it was everything. I just couldn't. I couldn't gel. I could not gel with it mm. at all. Um, it, again, maybe it'd been a situation of maybe I don't know. They maybe tried to ad- adapt to a larger audience. I don't know. Because uh, 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 agree with you there. Like I said, number one had uh, RPG feeling, but number two kind of went to that element out a bit it, it seemed to go more down the combat route it just didn't seem to I don't know it just really didn't pull me in as much anyway better crack on actually because we're, we're pushing on a little bit with time the next story that I had up was uh, Xbox One can play games while they're being installed uh, which s- certainly isn't bad news no it's could be that's quite good actually because obviously with current Xbox you can't do both at the same time so yeah it's not a bad feature they've added. Like I say, I like with a lot of the bad news that have obviously been happening with the Xbox One. This is certainly some good news uh, for the audiences. What do you think, Tom? Um, it's about time. <laughs> a bit of good news for Xbox. I think it's good. I mean, uh, it'll save you going and you know having to wait and going to get a brew. Like I say, it'll be interesting if you can do that. That you'd be able to possibly do other things on your Xbox One. So if it's downloading in or installing in the background. That maybe because they're going to go with this multi-media box entertainment system, that maybe you could go pop off and do other things, but be still on your Xbox One. That'd be quite interesting. But also just being able to play the game while it's installing is obviously again, it's certainly not a bad news. It's uh, it's certainly good news uh, for the people who are going to be buying it. 
Uh, but anyway, the other story which was uh, which caught my attention. Well, I didn't know whether or not to actually read this out or not, but I just kind of like ha- had my head in my hands almost. It was a Sony test PlayStation 4 controller that can detect sweat. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's not the best feature to add, is it? Well, no, but it seems to me like on both sides of the companies that they need to maybe prioritize some of their. Um, development on their controls like for example admittedly the playstation 4 apparently when they've been developing they've been looking at the first person shooters and adapting a lot of the buttons and control systems for that to make it more versatile for that sort of format and it seems like with again with the microsoft uh, one i read an article that they'd removed all visible screws from the xbox one controller but you still have to put batteries in it it certainly seems that they need to maybe start prioritising some of their development and not go off on these weird little improvements. I say with I say with PS4 with just detecting sweat and then with Xbox detecting everything from the trigger pull to to be fingers. Mm. And also they say with control with no visible screws like that's going to make a difference to gamers. Oh no, I can't see screws. In all honesty, <laughs> I just rather just add, well like what the PlayStation Three had have inbuilt batteries it's just it's a step forward i know they may be keeping a Duracell going microsoft is i don't know but it, it they just need to sort this out i think personally because um, just one thing to say as well as i read somewhere uh, in an article about microsoft if it's not broke why fix it i'm on the other side here i think removable batteries is a really good idea say um you know you, you've used your controller for like a year right and the batteries die it stops working with the Xbox One, you just take it out, buy a new one and put it in, and you know, problem solved. With the PS4, you'd have to get a whole new controller. Admittedly, I've not really had any problems with PS3 uh, for battery power. If anything, it's more the analog sticks. Um, <laughs> it no. break. But um, yeah, with the battery uh, system on it, 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 it seems okay. I have to admit, I'm not, that's one thing I've never had any problems with, or not noticed any issues. But yeah, anyway, uh, we'll wrap it up for the news for that, um, and we'll crack on with the UK Top 10 chart. <laughs> Okay, I'll give you a quick rundown of the top 10 UK charts. Um, I guess not really new in at number 10, but certainly moved in from any sort of ranking at all, is Aliens Colonial Marines has jumped back in at the top 10 charts. At number 9 is Tomb Raider. At number 8 is Assassin's Creed 3. Number 7, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Number 6, Far Cry 3. Number 5, Minecraft Xbox 360 Edition. Number 4, FIFA 13. Number 3, Mario and Luigi Dream Team Bros, which is new in. And also at number 2, Animal Crossing New Leaf. And still surviving at number 1, is the last of us um is anybody else surprised that aliens colonial marines has popped back in <laughs> yeah what the hell <laughs> who been buying it that game? <laughs> pardon you, you think the developers have just sort of <laughs> taught a load of copies had a whip round uh, no I, they did release a massive patch for the PC version you know doing the textures and fixing those bugs oh um, did they yeah oh, I didn't realise like I don't think they fixed the textures on the Xbox one, but they did put a bug fix out. But you think that might it's a bit, little bit late. Though, or previous gamers to go back to it? I, I don't think so. I think it's because it was on the same Steam sale. You know, it was quite oh, was cheap. was it actually in the sale? I think I saw it on the sale. I might be wrong, but I, I could have sworn I saw it. That probably would explain it then. <laughs> I was absolutely gossip. When I saw it there, I was just like, no, no, I must be, someone's gone wrong here. Um, so who, did anybody actually get Aliens Colonial Marines? No, uh, I, I did on Xbox. <laughs> Never mind. How was it? Uh, it wasn't too bad, to be honest. You've been nice, Tom. It, How was it? <laughs> it didn't make any sense, but it, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> Admittedly, I'm a big fan of the Aliens franchise. I do love the movies. Um, but I, admittedly, I can't probably give my full opinion on this game, mainly because I didn't actually play it. But by what I heard and by what I read, it wasn't coming across exactly how they had planned it to no <laughs> no I didn't but yeah it's certainly um, a surprise in the top 10 charts there um, let's have a look what's coming up in the next week of release uh, basically in the next week of release we've got mm, not a lot <laughs> wow that's a great definition what's going up not, not a lot, lot. Um, Can we have a more precise? are you interested in the Smurfs 2 Yes! Oh my I've always wanted a Smurfs game. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't realise there was a Smurfs 1. 
<laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Neither did I, to be honest. It must have done all right <laughs> if they're doing a sequel. <laughs> yeah, I know. But that, no, um, it's Murphs, no. Arcania, the complete collection, is coming out on the 30th, apparently. Not bad. Uh, Terraria, Terra, I can never name it. Terraria. 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 <laughs> Collector's Edition is also coming out, um, and that'll take us up into August. Um, I wish it Hakakui, Memories of Shineskamu, Me, Mu, yeah, that one. That's coming out on the 3rd of August. Uh, and Pikmin 3 is also coming out at the beginning of August as well. Um, so yeah, so it, 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 I think we're in the, the, the full flow of the, well, full flow, not really the best word, but the dry season of, um, the game releases at the present moment. Um, doesn't seem to be a, a lot happening. Uh, I think at the moment it's just more gaming news on the next gens, really. Even so, this last couple of weeks has been a little bit dry on their side as well. It's well, well, yeah, but seems you're, not, quiet. you're not going to see any new games released until uh, holiday season, really, now. Admittedly, I, I am meaning to pick up the Metal Gear Solid Legacy Collection because I am a true Metal Gear Solid fan, and I probably will get it, even though I have got the HD collection and all the original ones that have got released. I think we'll call it at that for another two weeks, but thank you very much, guys, for joining us. Um, uh, Tom, do you want to give your Twitter account up? Put it up? Um, no. <laughs> you still haven't got it started. <laughs> I don't use Twitter. Well, I do use Twitter. I don't really use Twitter. Okay. Well, maybe one day we'll, we'll be able to put it up at some point. Uh, Dan, how about yourself? Do you want to put your Twitter account up? Uh, you can f- I'm Daniel Twister. You can follow me at Twitter at DanielT320. Okay, and thank you very much, Tom, for joining me. Oh, no worries. Take it and easy. You, and you as well, Dan. Thank you very much. Hi, thanks, thanks for having me on. And I am your host, Roger Knowles, wrapping it up for another week, and we'll hopefully see you back in two weeks' time with a lot more news, a lot more game information, and enjoy the hot weather in the UK. Thanks, guys. Look after yourself. Thank, thank you very much. See ya.